Welcome to all you Logic Pro users. You're complaining, you're like, I don't have the Waves bundle, man, I'm fucking broke. Man, I don't got UAD plugins. You know, listen, Logic Pro X has some of the best stock plugins in any DAW. I promise you that. And not only do I promise you that, I'm gonna make a mix and master using just the stock plugins in Logic Pro. I'm gonna show you some really cool stuff. The template will be below with all the channel strip settings. The Beats by Max Margo, here in Radium, here it comes. Seriously, pay attention. <laughs> All right, so let's get started by playing this really dope beat from Max Margot. Um, I'm just gonna kind of show you the, you know, little intro coming to the drums. There you go, sick stuff, love it, Max. Uh, so here's the thing, first thing I'm gonna show you is just kind of the routing, you know what I mean? Um, I think you should probably be aware of routing. If you hit X in Logic, you're gonna see the mixer. Um, and then I will bring this up and kind of show you exactly what's going on. You got the kick, 808 clap, open hat, all this stuff. These are all the drums, basically, besides the 808. I don't typically like to use the 808 in the drum bus, so you can see this is going bus seven, bus two, bus nine, 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 two, 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 two. okay? So um, this is a little weird on the routing. I'm gonna actually switch up some things. Uh, Max set up just kind of his way of routing things. I'm gonna switch it up just a little bit, just so I have a little more control in how I like things. Now you can see snare bus here. You'll see kick bus, parallel compression bus, instrument mix, drum mix, and master augs, okay? And you can see the bus ends here. I'm just showing you guys everything in case you have any questions about what's being routed where and why this affects that, etc. So my kick is going to bus seven. Look here, bus seven is the kick bus, which is going to then bus one, which is a master augs. So it's going kick to kick bus to master augs. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. Very clear, very um, precise. This is bus six here on ascend. And bus six is going to be accepted here at the parallel compression. I'm gonna use this as a drum parallel compressor. Quick note on parallel compression. Parallel compression is how you're gonna achieve perceived loudness, okay? It's really important that you understand it's not just limiting and you know maximizing the stereo bus. Uh, we are limited to just the Logic stock plugins, but I'm gonna show you something really cool with parallel compression. It's pretty fun stuff, check it out. All right. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm, I have all my routing, everything's good. I'm gonna reroute some things. So I have my kick. I want all my drums to be going to the drum mix, okay, which is bus two. Now my kick is going to a kick bus and then going to the drum mix. I don't typically route things like that. I typically would just take this right out to the drum mix, okay? So I'm gonna go here, click and hold on the output. So here you're just clicking and you're holding and then scrolling down, still holding. And we're gonna drum mix here on the kick, okay? 808, this is going to bus two. I don't typically like to put my 808 with drums. Okay, so I'm just gonna take my um, my 808 directly to the master augs. So that's, or instruments, you know, instrument mix is fine. Um, uh, but I'm just gonna go master augs because I want my low end to be my low end and I'll show you why, okay? And then my clap is going bus nine, um, all this stuff. So clap, snares, all that stuff. That has a snare bus. I don't really want that. I just wanna go directly to the drum mix. Now, we can get more complicated with a mix, but I really got about 30 to 45 minutes to really show you guys a basic mix with just stock plugins, so I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna complicate too many things. So snare bus, I'm just gonna delete that. Just, okay, and then I got a kick bus. I'm gonna delete that, okay? And then parallel compression, I want that still. So I got bus two is feeding all my drums besides 808. So 808's just being passed. So I'm just setting up the mix. This is really important. I can't stress how important it is to keep housekeeping and keep things tidy and know exactly where to go for things. 
So bus three, because we're gonna be fast here, I'll show you. So these are all the instruments. I got a reverse effects here. I got rever reverb, delay, uh, snare bus. Um, again, I don't want a snare bus. See you, buddy. And then Logic will typically create an AUGS for any bus you do create. I know that sounds really confusing, but when you create like an 808 bus, it's gonna create an AUGS with it as well. And that's just so you have routing uh, capabilities and sends and all that stuff. So now we're gonna get into it. I'm gonna go right to where the drums hit because that's what I'm focused on. It's a trap beat, right? So let's go here. Okay, and then my next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set up the, the master augs. I already have a couple things going here. I'm just gonna turn them on and I'll explain what they're doing. Okay, so this is my multipressor. I don't want any of that. That's just gain, it's expanding up. But uh, this is just gonna control that sub frequency and the punch uh, of the kick. Just lightly. And then the sub, I'm gonna control this a little bit more. So you can come here, this is the com compression, compression threshold and the ratio. This is what we're focused on, this top row, these top two, okay? And the attack and release is uh, pretty important, but this is expander down here. So you have an expander right down here, okay? So I'm just focusing on the compression. I wanna just kinda um, control. So the first thing I'll do is I'll just kind of like clean up the master augs and get it ready to mix into. Um, so here I'm just getting rid of 20, like down past all the mud, the 28.5 Hertz and below. And that's just bam, filtering it out, right? And um, then I also, this is a linear phase EQ, really important to understand the difference. Linear phase EQ, just a note, a linear phase EQ is made so that there's no phase shifting. A lot of the times we like phase shifting because it's colorful. It can add harmonics. It can it can let like certain frequencies kind of blend over others and, and add like harmonic distortion or whatever. It's for color. Linear phase EQs are really for getting rid of stuff. So Massenberg EQs, things like that are very good on linear phase. You can get really tight on the cue so you can get rid of shit without it shifting the phase, which sounds kind of like, like a phaser, like you know, it's, it's my best impression, I guess. All right, so here we are, we're getting back into it. I'm gonna linear phase EQ out just the mud and I might also look around, um, you know, giving me a little bit more oomph in that low end because I do like that in trap music. And I'll typically focus around 50 Hertz or so. Um, and, you know, just kind of check it out, man. Chicken in, okay. And then I'll probably like find these boxy. Now look, I'm just like setting this up right now. I'm just like, yeah, I know what I want this to hit, this to hit that, right? So I'm just setting up a little master chain. So multipressor, linear EQ. Now I'm gonna come in and, you know, this is a challenge. You're just, you're just using the stock plugins here, right? So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and get something that has a little color as a compressor. The cool thing is we got a lot of really fun stuff now. So we can go into um, the dynamic section, section and you're gonna find um, uh, the adaptive limiter, which is really great. The de-esser is really great to even use as a dynamic EQ to get rid of anything that's weird. Um, but here I'm just going to get into um, uh, just some dynamics. I want to find something that's going to be a little, maybe even not, not even like, I'm just, just by the way, keep up with me. I just kind of riff sometimes. Um, that's how you mix as far as I'm concerned. I don't have anything planned out here. I'm just going. So the vintage EQ collection, I'm going to take the vintage tube EQ, which is a Poltec, and I'm just popping it on for the color. And you're going to see this output module. You're going to see silky, punchy, smooth. So I want to try just some different drive here. Just check out some vibe here. Now I'm gonna turn this on and off so you can hear it.
I really like that. So that punchy is really nice. It's giving it some color. I'm gonna back off it a little bit. A little rule of mine is like, I'll go where I think it's really cool and then I'll back off like, you know, 10 to 30%. That's just something I always do. And then I'm also going to use these, um, these uh, bandwidth and uh, a little bit of the high attenuation and shape the high end just to give me a little bit more gloss up top. So just a little bit of brightness. This is kind of a dull track, I feel like, so. Now I'm cranking the bandwidth. This is making it wider, so wider Q. So if you guys know what bandwidth is, we're talking about the Q, the quality of the EQ, which is basically saying, do we want it really tight and specific or do we want it wide and more general? So all this is doing is I'm just going like this and opening it up. Anytime I'm on the master bus, I try not to do really tight Q um, cuts or boosts because you're gonna start hearing it phase. It's gonna sound unnatural. This is a tube EQ, so I want it to be real soft. I'm just gonna do subtle moves on it. So here we go. So I'm just gonna give you a little high boost here. Okay, that sounds really nice. And then I'm gonna just attenuate. And the way that this, this EQ works, if you know a Pultec, is all it's doing is it's shifting the frequency that it's working. So you have 12K, if I start to attenuate as well as boost, it's just going to sort of like shape that EQ, which can add some really cool color. Okay, cool. And I'm just setting up the master bus. Now the next thing I'm gonna do is now I got a little color and I'm gonna turn all these off so you can hear the difference. So cool, right? And I'm getting a little bit of gain out of that as well. So now I'm gonna go in here and I'm going to give myself some limiting. And that's really like my last, the adaptive limiter is like a look ahead limiter. So this is where you're gonna get the most volume out of it, right? Okay, cool. So now I'm all set up. I can, I can kind of mix into this master uh, chain. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to my drums. I'm gonna get my kick. Um, you know, I'm gonna just solo it out, see what it's doing, you know? But I feel like it could use more thickness. It could use more actual like attack in it, right? So the first thing I'll do, I love these EQs. Um, they can be really bad if you don't know how to use them or they could be really great. This is a great EQ for me because I can see it's analyzing everything and I can see exactly what I'm affecting, which I fucking love. So I'm gonna go here. I'm just gonna get rid of some stuff. Anytime I can, I take, the, take advantage of getting rid of any frequencies I don't like. Okay, and then I'm gonna search for like that part I don't like that I'm, I'm gonna clear it up a little bit. Like that's just, you know, right around 1K is like typically a really good spot to find the attack one to 4K. So now I'm gonna go into my EQs again and my vintage EQ collection and bam, we got graphic EQ and a console EQ. So here's the console EQ, and what does this remind you of? That's right, so it's a Neve. Um, Neve 1073 EQ uh, style EQ, 1080 series really is what this is, because the you can tell by the blue knobs. And uh, just really nice because it's not fixed, so you can just move wherever you want, and thank you, Logic, for doing this. It also has a output module, which is amazing. These are the colors of the actual um, output transformer of the Neve. So they're saying like, you can have silk, you can have punch, you can have smooth. I'm gonna go with punchy, um, but I'm actually not gonna use the Neve for this. Uh, I just wanted to show you, that's the console EQ, okay? And then if you go back, you're gonna see the graphic EQ. Um, the graphic EQ is going to be the API version, right? So this is the 560, not the 550. It's great for cutting, um, not as colorful for boosting, but it's nice. Like I'm gonna try the 125 band. I'm gonna pop it in the mix. Oh man, oh man. 
<laughs> Drums are so important in trap music. Uh, I can't really like stress that enough. I won't talk too much about this, but that kick drum has to slap. And when you get slap, it's like, it's like big bottom, punchy bottom. Uh, it's soft, it's full, but it's also like, kang, kang, like you can, you can hear it. It's like punching you. Like if you've ever been punched in the stomach really hard, that's what it's like. It's like you get that, poof, it knocks the wind out of you. You know what I'm saying? So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to pop a, a little bit of compression on this, right? Because I just want it to slap just a little bit harder. Um, and we are going to use the compressor. The compressor in Logic is amazing, right? Because we have all these, we have v, uh, VCA. So for kick drum, I really want a Studio FET or I want like a vintage uh, VCA. So I'm gonna try this. Um, you can also just like go into the presets and you can go drums. Let me see, uh, like a kick, you know, a FET kick or a VCA kick, you know, uh, vintage snare. Let's see, type. Type R kick drum, let's try this out, right? So this is, a, this is a pretty fast compressor as well. You can try this one out. It might give it some punch, but um, I'm going to keep these settings, which is the best part about this, and I'm gonna go over to the Vintage VCA, right? And see how it just kept all the settings. So that's the best part about this, it's so amazing. You can pick up this and then you can switch it. So here it is. Oh my God, that's a lot. So first thing, turn the auto gain off. Make sure no makeup is on. And then the next thing is, is just to make sure your threshold is like pretty low. And I like the ratio on a kick drum when I'm trying to do something like this, make a smack. Um, you know, three to one, four to one, somewhere around there. You know, I could even brick wall it a little bit. Let's see, let's see what we like here. The attack, most important thing, I like the release pretty quick on a kick drum. So I'm gonna just do that, or you could turn on the auto. Now remember, VCA, 89 milliseconds is really still quite fast. And then I'm gonna play around with the knee. Beautiful, it's doing exactly what I want, right? I'm just getting some knock, getting some punch, getting it to cut through the mix. I wanna hear that kick, that's super important. Now, we're gonna go into this. This is, I spent a lot of time on the drums, obviously. It's the most important thing in a trap beat. So I got that kick knocking. It's controlled, I know I'm feeding the, the master bus what I want it uh, to have, and now I'm gonna turn on the parallel compression here to bus six, and I'm gonna turn on a compressor here. Yeah, compression, that's what we like. Super important. All right, so I'm gonna open up this compressor. I'm gonna go to probably a, a FET. I like the, the FET vibe, or we might even try the Studio VCA. Let's see what we got in here for presets, and we'll tweak. Uh, drum mix is good, maybe slammed kick. That sounds interesting. So this is a, this is a pretty good parallel compressor right here, the DBX. Um, let's give this a shot. Auto gain is off, we're good. And then we're going to, we're gonna feed the compressor, if you see over here on the bus, I'm gonna feed it 100%. I'm going to take the large fader down because we're gonna bring this back in to taste, right? I'm also turning on the limiter here because I don't want any overs. So just listen as I blend this in. Beautiful, right? So I'm getting a lot out of that. The clap is the next thing, the clap and snare balance. I wanna really get that right. It seems a little sharp to me right now. I don't mind this snare too being a little sharp, but these guys really gotta calm down a little bit, right? Like that's just like, there's so much in that, that high like 8K, 6K area. So what I'm gonna do here, is probably exactly why um, Max set this up to have a snare bus. <laughs> but now I'm going to make a snare bus, basically snare and clap bus, and I'm gonna process these together. So I'm just gonna go to a new bus. I'm just gonna go bus seven. 
cool. That's gonna create a bus all the way to the right. I don't know why it does that, but we're just gonna call this snare clap. And then I'm going to go here and we're gonna just get some uh, EQ going on here. And I think the graphic EQ is great for this. It's great for cutting. It also like took the level down quite a bit too. So we're gonna, gonna figure out why. Oh yeah, so I need to take this out to my master augs. Right, okay, that's that's the guy. <laughs> so stupid. All right, so check this out. So I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna... Like, I really need to hear these in the mix, so we're gonna play this in the mix. Okay, so instead of using this to cut, I'll show you something cool with the new de -esser. So you have 8K, 4K area. It's not really giving me the band I want. I think I'm probably more like 6K or so. So you could come into the um, dynamics here and you have the de 2. This is brand new in Logic 10.4.5. Uh, you can come in here, you could see like all the split band, white band, whatever. I wanna do like a wide band here and I'm just gonna go to about 6K, just a starting point. This is just like a dynamic EQ. I wanna filter here with a Q, not with a shelf, like with a bell. And then uh, you can filter solo if you want, right? Like you hear that stuff? Like why would, why would I want too much of that, you know? So I'm just gonna max reduction. I'm gonna take this down. Um, probably like, eh, let it reduce by like four or five dB, somewhere in there. And we're gonna go to relative mode is good split or wide, you can you can switch between these, but the DS are just gonna choke down on that stuff. So it's doing pretty, like, I, I like what it's doing. I just gotta be careful not to cut out too much of the high end. Okay, cool, I like it. Now I'm gonna just like compress this a little bit just to like, sometimes I use compression just to change the coloration or the saturation of the sound, right? So it's not necessarily to compress or turn down a sig signal. It's sometimes just to like soften out or harmonically distort around something that's like, like peaked out a little too much. So say you're feeding a signal, it's like peaked out in the 6K range, right? If I use a compressor that has like uh, output, input, um, transformer, tubes, things like that, I can take that 6K and I can add harmonics around it, which softens it out. It makes it very like much nicer on the ears. So that's what I'm gonna do with the compressor here. So I'm gonna turn the compressor on. I mean, I, you can see I'm not using very many of these tools. I'm just using like compressors, de uh, graphic EQs, things like that. And I'm just kind of like shaping the sounds and I'm shaping the, the feel of everything. Okay, so I'm gonna go to drums again and I'm just gonna pick like a, you know, snare top. I think that's probably a good start point just because I do know that that's a FET. I'm gonna turn the auto gain off again. Great, love it. It's doing exactly what I want it to do. It's softening out all that high stuff that hurts your ears. If I turn this track up, you're gonna be like, yo, this is at the club. You're like, fuck, can you turn the snare down? Sometimes it's not about turning the snare down, it's about turning down the frequencies that are annoying to the ear. So that's really important to remember. So I got a clap and a snare and then snare two. So those are all hitting that. It's, start, it's starting to sound like one sound, this clap and the snare, which is exactly what I want. You can also start to blend these and balance these. Now this is really a taste preference. The client could say, yo, can you give me more of that, that clap? Uh, they could say, yo, I need more of that snare and that body and that thwack. Um, I'm gonna check out the snare too. I really like snare too. I'm gonna keep that pretty dry. I'm now gonna go to the snare clap bus and I'm gonna send uh, it to a reverb. So I already have a reverb bus set up. I'm gonna just go reverb and we're gonna just, you know, give it a nice send volume just so I can start hearing it. Here's the reverb bus, bus four, right? Got it. And then we're gonna pop on um, one of my favorite reverbs, honestly, in this, like, 
this whole program, sometimes I'd love this to be in Pro Tools, is the Chroma Verb. Such a good reverb. And it has built-in EQ on the, on the return. So I can come in here and, and, dude, just cool shit, right? Like, it just looks fun. Like, if you're, like, a, like you're at, like, an 80s dance party with, like, you know, a bunch of drug fairies running around, like, you know, spreading drugs everywhere. <laughs> I don't know how better to say that, but, um, okay, so let's do, like, a dark room. I think that's kind of a fun vibe. Now, listen, I don't want that much of that. I'm obviously just, like, you know, opening it up, checking it out. Cool. Now, after the reverb, which is something I really like to do, is I'll like to go in and do like a little bit of a spread or something, right? So I'll find some stereo effect stuff. Um, let me see. Modulation, maybe. Yeah. Sometimes it's fun to do like a, a chorus on a reverb or the spreader. It's a really cool one. You can spread the reverb out. Um, and let's just give it a shot. So I like that, but I'm also going to try the chorus. I'm going to try just chorusing a bit of the, uh, the reverb return. So there's some good presets in here. I mean, you can try something like mega wide or, you know, glimmering. Yay. Pad enhancer, stuff like that. I mean, I'm going to just pick one. It just gives me a little bit more width and a little more, more vibe on that. And I really don't want very much uh, reverb on that, right? So... There you go, there's the kick, drums. I'm pretty good with the drums. Now I'm gonna get into this 808 a little bit because it's obvious that I wanna work on this. So I'll just take these, uh, all these guys, the kick and the 808 together and make sure they're working really nice together. Now one thing about this 808 is it's really low and it's definitely not going to um, do well on smaller systems. Like you probably won't even hear it, you know what I mean? So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into my linear phase again and I'm just gonna sweep out some bullshit. Okay, next thing I'm gonna do is I wanna compress it because I just want to, I wanna really like even it out a little bit, but I also wanna get a little bit more dynamic uh, control of it. So cool, I'm like trying to make it more floppy and modern too. Like it's such a clean 808. And then now I want to uh, give it a little bit of a distortion. Um, I'll come in here and I'll just like, uh, you know, there's some really cool distortions in here. I'm just gonna try, uh, let's give it a, yeah, let's do the clip distortion, see what we can do here. And you could find some really cool shit in here like, Right, so that's going to help it cut on smaller systems. And uh, high shelving, you can figure out what you want there. I like just a little color and saturation. I don't like to really like overdrive stuff because that's kind of just dated. Cool, it's just kind of rounding it out, giving it a nice little distortion. And the last thing I'll do is I'll just put a limiter on it because I always want to limit my uh, kick. I like, to, I like to have a lot of control over the kick, or the 808, I'm sorry. So 808, control the shit out of it, right? So you got precise and legacy. I'm gonna keep it on precise. Do a little bit of a look ahead and. Cool, sounding good. Now this lead I want this to dance a lot more. I want it to be like more exciting, more in the back, more bubbly, you know what I mean? Stuff Like just make it more fun. So you can do a lot of cool shit with this. Um, binaural uh, post-processing, this is a really fun one. But um, yeah, you can, you can kind of like mess around with this. This is headphone. You could do a speaker, crosstalk, cancellation. Just, I'll just show you what this kind of stuff does. Mm -hmm. 
mean, it's just really important, like, you know what these things are doing. Just flipping through them. Just kind of like takes it out of the middle, right? So you can do something like that. That's kind of fun to spread it out. Um, I like to use something a little bit more exciting. So like the delay designer is really cool. I don't know if you've ever used this, but it's pretty awesome. Uh, you can do really simple stuff like, you know, dotted, whatever. You can do complex filtered stuff. You could try this stuff. You know, it just gives it more vibe, it gives it more bounce. So pretty cool stuff, like I, I can take that and then I would actually compress before that. I wanna just like hold it down. I wanna give it a little bit more, um, you know, vibe. I want, I want, I'm always looking for vibe. That's like super important to, to what we do here. So I'm gonna go to the EQ, I'm gonna go to the vintage EQ and we're gonna do the console EQ. And we're gonna use this Neve to kind of make it pop a little bit more, but also give it some uh, output, uh, you know, some silky output or smooth, we'll check this out. So it's just kind of holding it down a little bit better. I really like that. And then this Jupiter Bells. You know, and you could just mess with this stuff for hours, like truly. <laughs> and then the last thing I wanted to do with this mix, I mean, it's at a pretty good spot right now. I got the, the low end held down, got the, the instruments sounding pretty cool. I'm gonna probably like let these instruments get um, a little bit more color actually on the mix bus here. So I'll throw like a, um, an EQ on here, the uh, the graphic or the 2BQ here. And I just like let this have a little color. I don't need to do much here. I just drive this a little bit, uh, give it some smooth console stuff. Let them all get compressed together as well. So um, I might use, I mean, straight up just the compressor here. And then we're going to give it some VCA, uh, vintage VCA here. Okay, I'm just gonna go back on this a little bit. I don't need this doing much, I just want to use this for glue. So that's all I'm doing, I'm just trying to find some glue in this. Cool, it's sounding really cool. And then uh, I got this. I wanna do some cool stuff with this. You can actually do really fun like turnaround stuff. So there's the piano. Doubler is really cool in Logic, you know. That's what it sounds like full on.
the doubler kind of like tucks back the piano in the mix, right? So it's not so like, here's a piano. Uh, you could use reverbs, you could use stuff like that, but I like to use doublers or I'll use chorusing or flangers, something to kind of like give it like, you know, basically phase out the, 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 um, the direct source, if you will. So anyway, I'm going to finish this off and I'll have everything down below. Hope you guys learned a lot. Hope you can use Logic Stock plugins once you get the template below and, um, you know, bring in your own stems and just like try it out with your own stuff. Hopefully it's really dope for you. All right. Thanks for tuning in. Um, always remember to subscribe to our channel, the Radium Podcast, Plugin of the Week. We got all sorts of stuff coming all the time. I'm going to do more tutorials. Uh, follow me, Bradley HD on IG. I do a tip of the day every single day. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this. Check out the track, Mark's, Max Margot. Check out his production and follow him on Instagram as well. And uh, have a good one. Enjoy creating in Logic Pro. Peace.